This is our city, has a radius of three miles. The density of the population is 12 minus 2R. And it says that that is at a, at a at R miles from the center. No, not R miles from the center. Sorry, I misread that. At R miles from the highway, and the highway goes through the center of the city. Everybody go with that? And then what does it ask us? It says the population of the city in thousands, which this is uh, this is thousands of people per square mile. Okay, so um, all we're going to have to do here is figure out a formula that's going to represent um, this you know, total population. Okay, so our total population should be, how do we figure that out normally? We're given a density of something. Where these things are like this is, you know, this is our distance, we'll say, from the from the highway. Right? And so we're gonna have to deal with this sort of like it's a semicircle. So if we deal with it like it's a semicircle, what is the equation of that semicircle on the top? Square root of radius squared minus, in this case, well, they're using r, so we'll just say it minus r squared. And um, since the variable, the, the normally the x variable, what we normally call the x variable, and our, our independent variable is r. Um, so that's the equation of that semicircle. And what is the um, what is the population along some strip of city because this entire strip, if it's infinitesimally thin, is all the same distance away, right? The density there is this 12 minus 2r. And so how are we going to relate all of these things together between this equation and our 12 minus 2r? How do we find number of people? Or how do we, how do we get people per square mile to integrate to get people? It ought to just be our equation here, which is our square root of nine minus r squared. We're going to multiply it by our density. And we're going to integrate from zero to three. And what does that do if we integrate from zero to three? That gives us the top half of the city. And so then we just need to multiply it by two. To get the bottom half of the city as well. Good or no? Twenty-one. Twenty one, right? Mm. Um, yeah, there should be a four there. Yeah, the reason why is because the um, this strip here is is twice that value of x right this this little piece here sorry this little piece here is just x so this is 2x if we put them together 
So this needs to be multiplied by two. Multiply your functions value square root of nine minus r squared by two. And then multiply by two for the bottom half of the circle. So yeah, it should be a four there. That's my four. Does that, does that make sense why there's a four? What do you mean? Okay, so I mean your density, your density, right, which is in let's say people per miles squared, you just need to multiply that by the area of each of these little strips. And the area of each of those little strips is this, right? So that's that's square miles. And so we're multiplying by miles squared, which gives us people. Does that make sense? Everybody good with that one or no? Yeah? yeah? I think that one's even actually a little trickier than what I'd expect you to see on the AP test. I mean, I'd be surprised if you had to do one that was, I mean, not that it's super difficult, but it is that difficult. Other questions? Can you do number 22, please? Say it again. 22. 22. Sure, 22 gives us a. I'm trying to stick my feet up in the last. All right, 22. They give us a chart where we have X is the distance in miles from the city center and F of X. Is the density in hundreds of people per mile squared? We got zero, we got what we got? two, four, six, eight, ten. We got 50, 45, 40, 30, 15. And what is it asking us here? It says, um, the population density of Winnipeg. Um, drops dramatically as the distance from the center of town increases. And so we want to calculate the population living within a 10 mile radius. So we're looking at this city as if it's a circle with a radius of 10. Right. And so if we're trying to do that, um, and we're just gonna approximate it using a Riemann sum because they've given us a chart here for this. Um, so all we need to do then is similarly to the last one, except this time we're not concerned about like these strips going away from the highway, but this is just in like, we call them concentric circles, right? Going out as your radius gets larger, your density gets smaller as your radius is closer to the center, your density is larger, right? Um, based on the stuff that they gave us. So we gotta basically use the same kind of idea. Um, we're going to do, looks like we'll do five sub intervals from zero to 10, but they give us the two equal ones. Did it specifically, what did it say? What what type of, did it give us the, no, it just is, that's stupid. Um, okay, so probably do a, since it's an increase, sorry, since it's a decreasing function, um, I think what I would do if I were doing this problem is I would probably, Calculate it as a left Riemann sum, and I would calculate it as a right Riemann sum. I would do both, and then um, say that it needs to be between those two values, and then pick the one that's between those two values. Um, does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Okay. So um, all we need to do then is take our. I mean, we're going to do our Riemann sum. We'll start with just the Riemann sum, which should be from the left two times fifty. Plus, well, in fact, we could just do two times since all of these are equal 50 plus 45 plus 40 plus 30 plus 15. This is on the left, and then on the right, be two times 5 plus 15 plus 30 plus 40 plus 45. Um, 
But I want to really multiply each of these things by. We're talking about circles here. What is the, you know, each of these circles is infinitesimally thin. And so we're talking about the circumference of them, right? It's like a ring of people that are a certain radius away. So these all need to get multiplied by the circumference of a circle, two pi r, right? That's the, you know, two pi r times the thickness of this is the area of that really thin ring of people. And then we multiply that by each one by the density of each one. Does that make sense to everyone? And so I don't know what those two things come out to be. What do those two things come out to be? I got 360 for left. Oh no, before the 2 pi r, sorry. 360, 2 pi r for the left, and then 270, 2 pi r for the right. 360 times 2 pi r, and then 370 times 2 pi r? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Don't actually need that r there, because um, that's r. I don't know why I wrote the R's there. That's R. I mean, that's what this whole Riemann sum thing is. You're dealing with the radii. So, so really, it's just 370 times 2 pi and 360 times 2 pi. Which one of those come out to be? Two thousand what? Does that look like our answer choices? Doesn't look like our answer choices, does it? Say it again. 270? Oh, 270. Yeah. Times the two by what did that come out? Of? That was not eleven. What was it? Is that not the right value? I don't know. My calculator is all. And batteries exploded in them, and so I can't use a calculator anymore. <clears throat> what is it? 1696. The density is in hundreds of people, so I think maybe you have to multiply that by 100, but still, that's like none of the answer choices because they're all greater than 600,000. Hmm. In my radius. Hmm. Should be fine, two pi. Fine, two pi. Conference times the width, two pi. Four pi. Are we sure we did our arithmetic right? 50, 45, 40, 30, 15. 60, 90, 90, 90, 90, 60. Sixty, one ten, one eighty. No, it should be one eighty times four times five. 
So that's what I have there. Uh, I do have 360 times two. Yeah, I'm looking here, right? Rewind sum, even, even the book, four power times zero times 50. Um, I see our issue. Our issue is we do need actually let's. all of this we need our two pi and then the the problem is that the radius of each of these is uh, it should still be the delta r two pi yeah we have four we have four pi r right we have four pi that's what the book says also, four pi times the density. Our density, four pi, or four pi r times our density, right? our circumference times twice of it times, it. yeah, that makes sense. That's what I had. That's what we had, right? We had our four pi, we had our density, we had the radius here. Um, oh, I, I erased those. I erased our R's thinking or saying that this was like that because the radiuses were included in this, right? But they're not. So this R, each individual piece of this, so like here our radius is 0 at 50. Our radius at 45 is 2. Our radius at 40 is 4. Our radius at, at 30 or at 6 is 30. So this should be zero for a radius here times our 50. So we get rid of our density here now. This is four pi in our radius. So it should be four pi times zero times 50 plus two times 45 plus two times 40 plus two, uh, what am I saying? Uh, four times 40, six times 30 and eight times 15 because those radii are still you know we're, we've got a full circle that's still out there so that radius we still have to include that value that we've gone out and so this one should have been uh, that, was, that was bad that was a mess four pi times this time it's 10 times five and it should be eight times 15 and it should be six times 30, and it should be four times 40, and it should be two times 45. That's bad. That should come out better. What the left one come out to be if you do that. And each of those radii is got you got zero for the first one, two for the next one, four for the next one. Oh, that was bad. For the first one? What? 5,000 something? People agree with that or not? Anybody, anybody else got a number? Because I got two people here with different numbers. I got six nine one two for the left. Nine one two. That's the third different number. That's what you got also. Six nine one two. That's three people that got six nine one two. I feel better about that. Three people that got that. Yeah. What'd you get for the other one? Got it. We're good.
7,500 what? 40? Yeah. So theoretically, the assumption then would be that it should be between those two. So it looks like that would be 702, 702,000. Would make the most sense. I think the most is decreasing function. So the left should be an over, right, the decreasing function, right? Yeah. So the left should be an overestimate and the right. The right should be a, should be an underestimate. That's weird. Since our right value is larger. Are we sure we got seven thousand seven thousand five hundred forty? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So now nah, we can't use that same estimate idea though, because we had to add in these extra radii. So We'll just do one of them and call it good. Let's just call it good on 6,912. Is that one of the answer choices? Yeah, that's what they said. 91,200? All right, we'll call it good on that. That problem will be on the AP test. Okay, that's a mess. Oh, I like that problem. They would always specify on the AP test. They would say, use a left, use a right, or use a midpoint. Ugh. By what? Because uh, it said in the problem that the population was in hundreds of people. Yeah. All right, let's move on from that problem and do something different. I don't like that. Other questions? Uh, 29. 29. A website went live at noon. Oh boy. Um, they gave us a graph. Something like that. Um, let's see. This is the visitors per hour. And we want to know approximately when the 200th visitor came to the site. Um, okay. Let's see here. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's going to be kind of hard to do this without the exact picture that they've got there. But this is visitors per hour. This is hours. There's one, two. Three. Four is like right at 150. Yeah. Okay. So we want to know when the total number of visitors reached 200. So that means we're looking for the area underneath this curve. Um, in the picture, you can sort of, I mean, it's a little bit easier to see um, on the picture of this online. But this little area here, the number of visitors in the first hour, you can tell is very. Very minimal, it's less than 10, okay. just based on the um, based on the picture that you're looking at. The next one looks like it's maybe about, I would say about 30 in this next area. And then between two and three, looks like it's about 75 and then the next one between three and four is looks like it's about 125 is the area underneath the curve from three to four and so it must have happened between three and four where they hit the 200th visitor because we clearly weren't close to 200 here but then we were way over 200 here so between three and four p.m for a seat does that make sense just looking at the area underneath the curve, Josh. Oh, so we do we add the the areas together to find the two hundred or like to get the two hundred? I think I turned the microphone off. Yes, you just add those different areas underneath the curve. Can you can you hear me? I think I accidentally turned off the microphone. Yeah, I heard you. Okay, yep, just adding those areas under the curve. Yep. Okay. Other questions, anybody? 
Could you do number 19? Um, yeah, one second. What, what is the question about that one, Tom? A Riemann system. Yeah, I mean, you could. Yeah, sure. All right, 19. Oil is leaking from a tanker. Okay, so if we have oil leaking at 1,000 E to the negative 0.3 T gallons per hour, we want the total number of gallons of oil that leak out in the first eight hours. That's just an integral from zero to eight of 1,000 E to the negative 0.3 T dt. So gallons per hour integrated to find gallons. What does that come out to be? Looks like that comes out to be. About 3031. Does that make sense? Yes. Wonderful. Other questions? Uh, 31, please. 31. An 18 wheeler traveling at a speed of V gets 4 plus 0 0.01 V miles per gallon. And then the velocity is 80 times T plus 1 over T plus 2 miles per hour. We want to know the amount in gallons of fuel used in the first two hours. So if we want to know the number of gallons used, we need to integrate gallons per hour. But we do not have gallons per hour. We have miles per gallon and we have miles per hour. How can we turn miles per gallon and miles per hour into gallons per hour? miles per hour divided by miles per gallon. Wouldn't that do it? Because if you divide two fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So that would give you miles times gallons over miles times hours. The miles would cancel and you'd have gallons over hours. So we want to take the integral of 80 times T plus one over t plus 2 divided by 4 plus 0 0.01 v dt and integrate that from 0 to 2. And the problem there is that v can't be integrated because this is dt. So then we've got to go back in and we've got to replace v with this 80 over or 80 times t plus 1 over t plus 2. So this becomes an integral from 0 to 2 of 80 times t plus 1 over t plus 2 over 4 plus 0 0.01 times 80 times t plus 1 over t plus 2 dt. And whatever that comes out to be is your answer. Does that make sense or no? Yeah, so why would integrating gallons over hour give you gallons? Oh, because so that's a that's a rate, right? Anytime you integrate a rate gallons per hour, you get the amount of that thing gallons. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Uh huh. Other questions? Everyone's good. Grass clippings? Yeah? Grass clippings! So, you guys remember doing this one? You guys did this one yesterday, right? Or you did it at home or something? What is the average rate of change? Average rate of change is just a uh, 
the slope, the slope between two points. So if we want the average rate of change of A between 0 and 30, that's A of 30 minus A of 0 over 30 minus 0. Your calculator will tell you what A of 30 is. You should be able to figure out what A of 0 is. You should know what 30 minus 0 is. What do you get when you put all those together? Negative 1 point what? 9, 6, 8. People agree with that? Let's make sure. Negative 1.968. Yeah, I think you got your decimal one spot off, Tom. Negative 0.197. And these are pounds per day. And we're going to interpret the meaning of this. Well, what is the meaning of this? This is, oh no, never mind. Just indicate units of measure. Interpreting the meaning for A prime. So point, negative 0.197 pounds per day. That was worth one point for answer with units. Answer without units, zero points. Units without answer, zero points. Answer with units, one point. Sometimes there's a point for just the units. So even if you don't know how to do it, put the right units if you know the right units. All right, part B, find the value of A prime of 15. Your calculator will tell you that value. What is A prime of 15 according to your calculator? Negative 0.164. Wonderful. And do not try to take the derivative of this and then evaluate it at 15. Please just have your calculator tell you what the derivative is at 15 on a calculator question. Um, what are the units for this one? Should be using correct pounds units. Say that again. Pounds per day. Pounds per day again. And what is the interpretation of this? The amount of grass is decreasing at that rate. Amount of grass clippings decreasing at t equals 15 at 0.164 pounds per day. Exactly. Everybody good with that? And that was two points. One for the number, one for the explanation. All right, part C. Find the time for which the amount of grass clippings in the bin is equal to the average amount of grass clippings in the bin between 0 and 30. So we want the amount to equal the average amount. Well, what's the amount of grass clippings in the bin at any time. The total amount in the bin is AFT. So we want AFT to equal the average amount in the bin. Well, what's the average of a continuous function? It's 1 over B minus A times the integral from A to B of that function. So we want to know when does AFT equal this? This thing is just some number. Right? Your calculator will tell you the number for that. This is just an equation. You will graph this equation. You will graph whatever this is. Y equals whatever that number is. Anybody know what that number is? 2.753. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll either graph A of T and graph Y equals 2.753 and look for the intersection point. <laughs> Or you could graph A of T minus 2.753 and find its x intercept, which came out to be T equals 12.415. Good. Any questions or issues there with part uh, C? All right. Part D. Oh. Um, Points for that. Points for that one. Two points. One. Where did, where did that go? That. One point for the integral, one point for the answer. All right, part D. Uh, part D says that the linearization 
at 30 is a better model for the amount remaining in the bin after 30. So we got to remember what is the linearization? Just in general, the linearization formula L of X is F of A plus F prime of A times X minus A. Right? That's your linearization formula that you need to know. For our purposes, A is 30. So our linearization here should be A of 30 minus A prime of 30 times a T value that we're looking for minus 30. And we want to know when does that equal a half, right? So um, you've got a value for A of 30, you've got a value for A prime of 30. You can just solve for T. And what did T come out to be? 35.054. That sound right to everybody? How do we feel about that? Good, bad, indifferent? Wait, so is it A of 30 minus A prime of 30? Because we know that like, um, it's that a prime of 30 is going to be negative. Oh, sorry, plus. I don't know. I, I had a plus up there, didn't I? Yeah, I don't know why I wrote a minus there. It should still be a plus. Sorry. That's just me not writing the plus sign that I had and writing a minus sign instead. Good or no? Oh, for that one, the point breakdown was uh, two points if you had this expression for the linearization, one point if you set it equal to half, and one point for the final. Good or no? Everyone's good there? I know I told you guys to do this one, but just in the interest of preparing you for the quiz tomorrow, we're gonna skip that one for now. We're gonna skip this one. We'll do this one. I'm gonna give you guys a couple minutes to, yeah, 15 minutes to work on this, and then we should have plenty of time to go over it, and then that'll be it for today. Sound good, everyone? Great. Ready, go. So. We'll do 67.9 minus 61.8 over 15 minus 9. And what does that give us? I got 1.017. Wonderful. Using correct units, interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of the problem. So what is the meaning of this and what are the units? This is degrees Fahrenheit per minute. And what is this saying? This is the the rate at which the temperature in the tub is increasing at T equals 12. Right. Rate of temperature increase at 12. Good. All right. Part B. Anyway, anybody questions on part A? As we're two points, one for the value and one for your explanation. What's the unit? Good. All right, part B, we want to use the data to evaluate the integral from zero to 20 of W prime. So that ought to be W of 20 minus W of zero, shouldn't it? Right, integral of W prime is just W and evaluate at the upper and the lower. So what's W of 20? It's 71 minus 55. That one should be pretty straightforward. 16. And this is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. And what is the meaning of that? Okay, increase or change, a change in degrees Fahrenheit and temperature from T equals zero to T equals 20. Good? Everybody good there, no issues there? Zoom, you guys good with our base? Yes. 
one point for the value, one point for the interpretation. All right, part C, we're going to use a left Riemann sum to approximate the average temperature of the water. So left Riemann sum and the one over 20, so we'll do the one over 20 first. And then we've got the left Riemann sum says four is the first interval and 55 is that height, so four times 55. Next interval is five and the height is 57.1 then six and 61.8 and then five and 67.9. And what did that come out to be? Like 60.79. 60.79. Is that an over or an underestimate? Right, we got an increasing function, a left Riemann sum will underestimate, underestimate. So it's an underestimate. And you would say because W is increasing. Strictly increasing is probably better reason that it never decreases, but saying it's increasing is fine. Um, three points there. One point for the setup for the Riemann sum, one point for the value, one point for underestimate with a legitimate reason. Good? Cool. All right. Last part here, part D. For 20 to 25, um, W has a derivative that is this. We want to find the temperature of the water at 25. So if we want to find the change in temperature from 20 to 25, that'd be the integral of W prime. And what do we need to add to that? The initial temperature of 20. Right? So 71 plus that integral gives you 73.05. Good. Two points for that one. One for the integral, one for the answer. Any questions or issues with that? Do you always use the x value that's closest to like what you're trying to find? Like um, 20 to 25, I ended up using zero to 25. Yeah, you definitely want to use 20 to 25 specifically because it only states that this derivative is valid only on oh, 20 to 25. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if it you. said it was valid for 0 to 25, then for, you know, 9 to 25 or whatever, you could have used any of the values. You know, if it said 0 to 25, you should be able to use any of them. It would work. Okay. If it said, you know, 15 to 25, you should be able to use 15 or 20 because those are both invalid. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Any other questions? All right, we got like five minutes left according to the clock at school. What? Is it ahead now? Well, I wasn't sure if like this one had slowed down or if that one had sped up or something. That one sped up. Yeah. Uh, we don't have time to do any more problems anyway, so we'll call it.